welcome to foodfeedinfo.com this is part 4 of fat metabolism in this video we will look at the fate of glycerol which is produced as a result of hydrolysis of triglyceride so now look at this the, a triglyceride in the digestive tract is hydrolyzed into monoacylglycerol or diacylglycerol uh, through this lipases so as a result of complete hydrolysis of triacylglycerol or triglyceride there is a production of one glycerol and three fatty acids so these fatty acids are utilized uh, for the resynthesis of our triglyceride or uh, they may get oxidized uh, through different pathways for the production of energy whereas uh, the glycerol have some different fate glycerol uh, which is produced uh, as a result of hydrolysis of triglyceride glycerol is a glycogenic and it enters the glycolytic pathway after its uh, conversion into glycerol 3 phosphate and then into dihydroxy acetone phosphate uh, in the first step glycerol is converted into glycerol 3 phosphate by glycerol kinase enzyme during this step one atp is utilized and that result in the formation of glycerol 3 phosphate uh, through the enzyme glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase there is a production of dihydroxy acetone phosphate so l glycerol 3 phosphate is converted into dihydroxy acetone phosphate and there is a production of 1 nadh uh, during this step and this step is hydrol this step is uh, catalyzed by glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme so this dihydroxy acetone phosphate so during the previous slide uh, we look at uh, the conversion of glycerol into glycerol 3 phosphate and then into dihydroxy acetone phosphate dihydroxy acetone phosphate have two fates the one is its conversion into glucose through gluconeogenesis and the other is its conversion into pyruvate that is same uh, pathways which we have seen during glycolysis so now we will look at the first dihydroxy acetone phosphate is first converted into glucose uh, through gluconeogenesis so this is basically uh, uh, the pathways when uh, there is a deficiency of glucose and there is a uh, cell require a uh, direct supply of glucose so this dihydroxy acetone phosphate is converted into glucose uh, but further utilization of glucose is through the same uh, pathways the one is glycolytic pathway and then uh, through tca cycle whereas if uh, there is a sufficient glucose at cellular level or tissue level then this dihydroxy acetone phosphate is converted into pyruvate again the same pathways uh, where Uh, we have already seen through glycolytic pathway the glucose is converted into pyruvate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate is an intermediate uh, during uh, this glycolytic pathway so this dihydroxy acetone phosphate then converted into pyruvate then again this pyruvate is converted into acetyl coa and then utilized through tca cycle so this is how this glycerol is utilized in the body the first its conversion into glis glycerol 3 phosphate and then a dihydroxy acetone phosphate and then either its conversion into glucose or into pyruvate now we will uh, look at uh, these steps of uh, utilization of uh, this dihydroxy acetone phosphate so look at the left side of the slide there is a dihydroxy acetone phosphate so it uh, can be converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate through phosphotriose isomerase and that then converted into fructose 16 bisphosphate or dihydroxy acetone phosphate can be converted into fructose 16 bisphosphate and then fructose 16 bisphosphate is converted into fructose 6 phosphate by fructose 16 bisphosphatase and fructose 6 phosphate is then converted into glucose 6 phosphate through glucose 6 for uh, phosphatase or phosphohexokinase hexo phosphohexose isomerase 
so uh, in this way there is a production of glucose 6 phosphate and then glucose 6 phosphate is converted into glucose by glucose 6 phosphatase so this is how this dihydroxy acetone is converted into glucose so as a during the next step we uh, are going to see about now we can see uh, the energy production uh, during the utilization of uh, this glycerol molecule uh, because uh, during the first conversion we have seen uh, this glycerol is converted into glucose via uh, gluconeogenesis so for the production of glucose there is a requirement of two moles of glycerol because glycerol is a three carbon compound and glucose is a hexose sugar or six carbon compound so that's why we need two moles of glycerol that are converted into two moles of dihydroxy acetone phosphate so as a first step there is a production of five atps from nadh 2.5 na 2.5 atps per mole of glycerol and from two moles of glycerol there is a five atps and during this conversion there is also a utilization of one atp when glycerol is converted into glycerol 3 phosphate so there is a utilization of two atps during this step then for the further oxidation of this glucose uh, this uh, glucose into carbon dioxide and water there is a production of 30 atps so we can say there is a production of 35 atps and there is a utilization of two atps so net we can get 33 atps per mole of upper uh, two moles of glycerol and if we convert it or divide uh, these atps by two so we can say 16.5 atps they are produced per mole of glycerol so this is how uh, the utilization of glycerol and the production of energy is there so simply uh, if uh, if glycerol follow gluconeogenesis pathway so there is a net now if glycerol is converted into pyruvate how uh, this can happen so dihydroxy acetone phosphate they are interconvertible it is converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and then there is a production of nadh and synthesis of 13 bisphosphoglycerol then there is a utilization of one uh, ATP, uh, there is a production of 1 ATP and there is a synthesis of 3 phosphoglycerol, then 2 phosphoglycerate, and then phosphoenol pyruvate. Phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate, and then pyruvate is converted into acetyl CoA, and then it is utilized through the citric acid cycle. So, during this uh, con conversion or during uh, uh, this cycle how much energy is produced if we look at this chart one mole of glycerol to one mole of dihydroxy acetone phosphate so there is a uh, production of one nadh and there is a utilization of one atp this is same as we have seen when glycerol is converted into dihydroxy acetone phosphate and then it is converted into glucose so this is same uh, same but in this case there is only utilization of one mole of glycerol then one mole of dihydroxy acetone phosphate to one mole of pyruvate if you look at this uh, diagram uh, there is a production of 4.5 atps 2.5 from one nadh and then two atps so total there are 4.5 atp here we are considering the production of 2.5 atps per mole of nadh then one mole of pyruvate to carbon dioxide and water so there is a production of 12.5 atps so in total there is a production of 19.5 atps and uh, there is a utilization of one atp so net yield of atp per mole of glycerol is 18.5 so if we compare it with the previous uh, uh, slide so overall production of atp per mole of glycerol is more when it is utilized through tca cycle rather than its conversion into glucose and then uh, uh, glucose hydrolysis or glyco uh, uh, glucose utilization through glycolytic pathway and tca cycle so this is a brief summary of uh, this energy production dihydroxy acetone phosphate it can be con uh, can be converted into glucose through gluconeogenesis and then uh, it uh, 
glucose get oxidized through glycolytic pathway and TCA cycle so net there is a production of 16.5 ATP per mole of glycerol and then dihydroxyacetone phosphate can be converted into pyruvate uh, through glycolytic pathway and then pyruvate is utilized through TCA cycle so in this case there is a net production of 18.5 ATP so two ATPs are more when dihydroxyacetone phosphate is utilized uh, through this glycolytic pathway and then through TCA cycle so this is all about uh, this glycerol utilization thank you